when the Japanese captured people, of course they, you know, they went down to the tip of, um, of Malaysia and they were all set, they were going to attack. Um, the people, the British had planned to fight back, but they had taken the, um, the guns and cemented them in facing out towards the harbor because that's the way they expected to be attacked. Well, the reality is the Japanese knew this, and so they came down the Malay Peninsula um, on bicycles and were able to capture the, ja um, the Americans and the British and the French and the Chinese and all the ones that were against them. One of the people captured was a young girl, and her name was Judy, and she was with her in, in Southeast Asia because she, her parents, I believe, were missionaries, and she was there and she was captured. Well, now she had either a toothbrush and a comb, and her friend had a toothbrush or a comb. So they had one toothbrush between them and one comb between them, and they shared. Well, she came and talked to my students 50 years after all this happened, and her friend had lost the thing she was supposed to hang on to, and she was still irritated about it 50 years later. Now, when she was there, women, they just didn't know what to do with women prisoners. Um, some, in some areas, they just marched them from town to town to town to town, trying to find a place to take them. And is in, the, the, in um, a town like Alice, which was a PBS movie, um, which was based on the book Legacy by Neville Shute, um, they talk about this. They talk about how they took the women and the children and they just marched them from town to town to town until finally their guard died and they begged the people of the town they happened to be in to just keep them and they promised to work. They promised not to be pushing people around. They promised to earn their keep and so the town just kept them there um, and treated them well and um, even though it was they were risking the the um, anger and the ire of the Japanese by doing that. Now the Judy, the lady that I'm talking about here, was in a um, camp that was out in the forest and the Japanese soldiers just didn't want to take care of them. They didn't, they felt humiliated by having to take care of them. If they had been good Japanese women they would have committed suicide before letting themselves be taken. And so she stayed in a camp and then later on she was marched up and put into a prison at Camp McDonald, I think it was, and it is where the men who had been on the Bataan Death March, those who survived, had been. And she said that she could see inside the rooms and inside the cells marks on the wall for how many days they had been there before they had been taken away. And she talked about how um, there's a, there was a movie, well not a movie, a series on A&E, arts and entertainment called Tenko and I think it's something like 26 hours long. I watched it for weeks and weeks and weeks. But Tenko is the story of women taken and put in a Japanese prisoner of war camp and she said that the people who did the story, who wrote, did the, did the documentary or the show did such an accurate job that she could tell you the real names of the people that were being portrayed in the in the series. And so if you ever get a chance to see a town or see Tenko or a town like Alice, and it's referring to Alice Springs, which is in the middle of Australia, because one of the men, one of the soldiers, um, was taken and um, actually crucified. He was had, had you know, um, nails put through his hands and everything and they were going to, the Japanese were going to kill him and they said what did he want to have for his last meal and with a lot of bravado he said he wanted chicken and a cold beer and since they couldn't provide that they decided not to kill him and they let him go. And so the story is about um, a girl who was taken and then of course this man who was taken. And so it's a good love story if you ever get a chance to read Legacy by Neville Shute it's a good story. An adventure but also a bit of a romance.